RESTful APIs for Meteor, and then I'll, we'll do a quick kind of walkthrough tutorial. Um, <clears throat> does everybody know what RESTful API is? Probably you all do. So. <laughs> introduction, okay? <laughs> Funny you should say that. A little introduction here. So, okay. So what is a RESTful API? So this is kind of the standard Wikipedia stuff. Stands for representational da 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 da. Uh, and basically, it's a simple way for interdependent systems to communicate with each other in a kind of HTTP protocolish type of way. So, you know, either system can be in all, all kinds of frameworks or languages, and they can interact in a very nice and, and kind of easy to implement kind of way. So, RESTful applications they use HTTP requests, and they do your normal. Uh, CRUD type actions, so your create, read, update, delete type actions. So system A could say to system B, I don't know who you are or what you do, but I want to delete one of these records from your database. And it can make a very simple HTTP RESTful call and do that without having to know how the implementation is it's actually done on the, on the other side. So why do I need one? So why would you need a, a RESTful API? So these are some, some examples of some use cases here. Um, you have a media app, server app and you want to build a native mobile app so you could use a RESTful API for that. Uh, you could expose your API for any other system to get into your data. Again, you could integrate with other frameworks or platforms without having to integrate a DDP client. Um, and then again, there's things like some types of data apparently don't uh, translate too well over DDP, so uh, large chunks of binary data or files, and it also avoids um, some overhead with creating web sockets, um, maintaining web sockets. Okay. So, how would you implement a RESTful API in your Meteor app? Um, has anyone actually done this in the past? Kind of. Uh, did you use any particular technique or package or? Server side rendering and then. Okay, so you did it. The basic responses from there. Right. So, iron router sort of server side routes or? Yeah. Okay. Did you do something similar or? Well, the package to RPC. Oh, okay. So it's quite low level stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, so I looked at this. I started looking at this a couple of weeks ago for another project, and there's a quite a well-known package called Restivus, which is, seems to be, or was, the de facto kind of standard for implementing RESTful APIs in a Meteor app. Um, and then there was some more lower level stuff, so you could you know, just define server-side routes in uh, using Iron Router, or the REST API package, which is on top of that. And it wasn't actually that complicated. Um, alternatively, you could use the Connect NPM package which is kind of like a bit more lower level again um, stuff. So, but then uh, as of last week, the 20th of April, uh, there was actually a new library that came out, a new package from Sashko, uh, part of the MDG core group. And he's, he's basically, uh, he put a hack pad together about wanting to create a super simple way of exposing your whole uh, Meteor application. Um, through a very simple, um, you know, RESTful library. So he created a new package called Simple Simple Colon REST, which really makes things very, very easy to add a RESTful interface to your server. Um, and what we can do is do a quick uh, demo um, of that. So I've actually got, I try to make this uh, demo more interesting. So I've got some hardware here, which is a Spark Core Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller. And I'm going to try to communicate with that from my Meteor app, so through the cloud. So I've hacked up the leaderboard example from Meteor and called it leaderboard, LED, a board. And uh, so I can vote for these things. And if I make red the winner, that should light up. 
like that. <laughs> and now we know what you do. And now, <laughs> I make blue the winner. That will light up. Blue. So. I think I've just seen the internet of things. But, you know, that's, that's not the end of it. So, <laughs> rather than me do that, I put it on media.com, and so you can actually go to letterboard.media.com and vote and change the LEDs. You want to try that? <laughs> You'll probably blow up my microcontroller because you're all <laughs> doing that, but you can vote for your favorite. And it kind of nicely shows off the reactivity and everyone's client changing. Also. But I'm sure it's going to have trouble catch, keeping up. <laughs> Blue's winning. Blue's winning. <laughs> <Need> some reds. Go <laughs> uh, <All> red. Go <laughs> oh, <it's the> <laughs> red. <laughs> oh, okay. It so it's probably trying to catch up with all the messages. So this is where it kind of breaks down. So unfortunately, what happens is uh, you're changing the, the client side. It's going to the back end to the meteor side. The meteor side is then saying, I need to uh, make a call through the Spark cloud infrastructure to this guy. And now this, that's probably what's flashing in red now. It's probably saying, hey, what's going on? So many messages. Um, so it's trying to reconnect to the internet now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, red. You see? Red, the winner. There we go. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so uh, this actually does not actually demonstrate the RESTful interface. For me too, by the way. <laughs> I should just tell you that. But we are going to demonstrate it using this. So here's, here's Postman. Has everyone used Postman before? Anyone? Okay. Postman is a really, really useful tool for testing out your API calls to any other kind of system. It's based on Chrome. It's just a kind of Chrome underneath. But you can like, you know, set up your API call, your endpoint here. You can add parameters to your, you know, your body of your call and stuff. So here I'm going to call. So what I've done on the server side of the media app is I've exposed these functions: switch off blue, switch on blue, switch off red, switch, switch on red. And so I can call this directly here. Uh, so I'm going to call this using the RESTful interface now. So uh, switch off blue. So if I do that, this guy should error first, and then uh, if he reconnects, okay. Okay, switch off blue. Uh, let's try switch on blue. Oh, it's reconnecting again. Oh, did somebody do something? No, maybe that was me. Switch off red, let's try that. I got a feeling it's still catching up with all those messages that came in before. Um, let's try again. Okay, so let's switch off. Let's try switch on red. Okay, so I can switch on and off the LED using a restful call. Kind of fun, but useless. So, <laughs> so how do we do that? So let's do an example of actually creating a very simple app with a RESTful interface. Um, so this is uh, quickly. This is the the new package from from MDG. Um, simple REST. It's in Atmosphere. There's quite a lot of nice documentation down here. Um, there's the GitHub page. So you can actually check it out, and I think it's got some, some examples in here, but we'll, we'll do a quick example. Um, now, if you go to, there's a gist here, which we're going to use. Uh, the gist <coughs> URL is bit.ly slash meteorsg dash rest. That's that one here. So. Okay. 
Does it break all that? Yeah, then you should get to this page here. Anybody need to see that again? No? Okay. <clears throat> so we'll just work through these, uh, these steps here. Um, so here, again at the top here, this is the leaderboard example with the LEDs. Uh, this is basically, we could have done this actually using our shell um, if we wanted to. Um, we could have just done a curl from the, sh the command line here, switch on blue. If I'd done that, that guy should go on. Again, having, yeah, it's kind of, that's basically when it disconnects from the Wi-Fi and has to reconnect. But anyway, that, that should go on. Um, so you can do it through curl if you don't have Postman. So let's let's start from here. Walk through of creating a new media app with a with RESTful API. So let's create. Uh, okay. So let's start by creating the example app. So media create dash dash example to dos. done. Uh, let's just take a quick look at that. That's there. If I run that guy up, you should be kind of familiar with this thing. Okay, so we have our standard Meteor to do's app. We can uh, create new tasks. Ask. We can look through lists of things, we can sign in, all the normal stuff. Need an account. So this is our standard uh, Meteor to do's app, but it doesn't actually have any RESTful interface at the moment. So it's, you know, it's just standard Meteor reactive, da da da. Um, so let's add a RESTful interface to this app. So let's go back to here. So the next thing we need to do is add a few packages. So if you copy this line down here, add simple rest. Uh, simple rest, simple JSON root, simple rest accounts password. Files. So start up your favorite text editor. Atom, I use, but okay. And then in server publish.js, we're gonna just change that method, the publish method, at the bottom of the file. And just to override it with this guy from the gist. And basically, all this is doing is, is adding a customized URL for that route for the RESTful interface. Um, so it's adding a, a, an endpoint here with publication to dos and an argument colon zero uh, to make that accessible at that URL. So just override that, save that. And then you have to add this part down here as well, this JSON route stuff, if you want to access your API from outside your app, from any kind of random place. So you have to copy and paste that in. That's done. Um, 
then we'll go back to curl and now we can actually query what routes are in the app. You can see we've got some routes API endpoints set up now for all our publications, all our methods and this actually obeys all your security rules so it should only allow you to do stuff that you're allowed to do. Uh, it's a bit nicer to see in Postman so list of routes so you do localhost, publications, API routes so that's the same for all applications. If I do that now I can see all these guys all these routes are now set up for calling so it's super simple, kind of. You know, took me like five minutes to do that. So, so let's just try calling one of these guys. Um, so let's say I want to get all the public lists from my to do's app. So, where are we? So it should be something like. public lists and then I've got a list of my I got return all the media principles languages favorite scientists so it gives you all this stuff over here um, or you can use Postman Try a different one. Oh, okay, so that's that. Um, okay, so that's basically that. Did everyone get that working? Gave up, got bored. No? <laughs> yeah? Um, <clears throat> okay, so disclaimer. Mm. I play with the rest of the class, but very, very long time. Um, currently, Monolith, there's, there's two parts when you look at REST APIs. Mm. Uh, the first thing is usually the, the guys who make applications start with the REST interface first. And then, okay, this is how your REST interface is supposed to look. Yep. Please write your code accordingly. Mm -hmm. So, how would I do that in Meteor as well? And the second thing is, um, it seems to emerge a, a standard for documenting and stuff, like uh, Swagger or IO. Mm -hmm. um, is there any chance to to, collect that, uh, uh, to generate a Swagger file out of here? Uh, I did read some threads about I mean, it's still quite new. It's, it's less yeah. than a week old. So I think they're working on getting the documentation or some some way of automating the documentation uh, from the RESTful API out of this. Uh, I can't remember if it was the one that you mentioned, or, was it, or maybe there's another one. Um, yeah. and I think it's also and it's basically a stinky indented text file. Yeah. So that's yeah. special. But I'm, I, th I think I do remember reading something about that. If someone else was asking about that, and I'm sure it will come eventually. Uh, and, and the other question, I think, in terms of defining your uh, RESTful API first and what you need to actually call, rather than just like, okay, here's everything. Um, again, I think you probably, you know, I haven't played with it too much, but I think you can probably somehow find a more tighter way to control what is actually exposed, not exposed. Um, and apparently this library will, you know, it will obey all your roles that you got out, all your authentication security stuff that you've already got in your Meteor app will actually be, you know, um, be followed by, by using this method as well. So you shouldn't be able to do things that you're not allowed to do using this. But interesting exercise, like saying, yeah. to write very well as well. I said, okay, yeah. here's the REST API, make me meet your application. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think I read there is one sort of uh, command line tool where people are actually saying you can define your application in, in some sort of file and then run a, run a command and it'll actually create the bare bones application based on what you're telling it to do. Um, I can't remember what it was called. Is it a Meteor? Not Meteor Kitchen, right? Or I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll try to dig it out for you. But, um, okay, so that's kind of it on the API. Uh, any other questions? Or no? Is this yeah. authentication supported? Yeah. So with this package, it apparently it's all supported. I mean, uh, RESTful, that means uh, allowing only a certain clients. So there's actually um, a 
again I haven't played with this yet but there's a authentication here so uh, there's a way to actually log in as well over HTTP HTTP and that's why we added this package the rest accounts password stuff um, so yeah take a look at that Rest of us. Yeah, I think that was the first one I So, I mean, Rest of Us has been around for a while. Um, and it's, I think it, the guy who wrote it, or the, the woman, uh, Kamali, is, uh, she's actually been involved in the hack pad that Sashka was writing when he came up with this. And it seemed like they're going to be working together. So that it looks like there's some stuff which the rest of us might still be valid for. Again, I have not really played with that, so I'm not sure. I was trying to find out, okay, why would you use this and why would you use the rest of us? Which use cases are best for each? But it looks like this, they're working together and the rest of us will actually, may change as a result of this. But it's still going to be around for some reason. So it sounds like that does actually do stuff that you might need to do. So again, sorry, I don't know exactly why. That package is better. Is this, uh, compatible to REST servers? If you already developed something with REST servers, you want to enable this as well in the same project? Uh, I, th I think you can. So I think with the. Let me just check. Cause, uh, the rules might clash. Let me just go to check because I think there was something in the hackpad about this. Uh, REST servers. Simple, that is simpler, and the rest of is like more, it's more complicated. You have the right model? Yes, we have right model. Yeah. That's a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> um, Just more boilerplate. Yeah, again, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, I think I'll put a link to the hackpad in the, in the notes so you can take a look at that. But it seems like the author of the rest of us is still quite actively involved in, in this stuff as well. So it doesn't look like. From what I can see, they're not going to deprecate the rest of us, so there's probably still a use case for it somewhere. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay, so before I finish, um, there is a few... If you're kind of... I don't know how many people are kind of new to Meteor, but there's, there's a lot more stuff out there... Uh, resources for learning and like keeping in touch with what's going on developments. I'll just put a small list together of things that I f try to follow to stay in touch. So there's a couple of mailing lists, credit.io and This Week in Media is quite a nice one. It's like just a weekly one-off and it summarizes like the top five or ten like main changes happening. Um, there's a couple of blogs, you might you probably come across those. The first one, Media Hacks, is the one that Aranoda runs. Um, podcasts, if next time you're on the treadmill, you need something inter interesting to listen to, that's, those are quite good. Uh, and then the, obviously the YouTube, there's a Meteor, the official Meteor channel where they have the Def Shop Talks, which is kind of like the latest and break, latest breaking stuff they normally announce. And then of course there's some sort of forums for help. And don't forget the Media Singapore Facebook page, because we've got like 300 members on meetup.com, but we've only got like 70 people on the Facebook page. So something's going wrong. <laughs> so like the Facebook page because that's where we often discuss stuff and also join the Slack chat because it's a bit quiet <laughs> a bit boring so uh, yeah join the chat that's it